Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. We're going to continue this series of how to program in C Sharp for beginners using WinForm applications. And we'll be creating a lottery number generator. So this will go hand in hand with my last video. And we'll be getting into uh, for loops. So right now I have a brand new form. And I downloaded this picture. This is a PNG, so you can go on Google and then just go to images and type in lottery select an image that you like and I'm gonna show you how to convert it into an ICO um, file and then that way we can use it as the icon for the form so let's get started I have a nice form here all I've done is change the actual text to lottery number generator and then I've also changed the name of the form to lottery number generator form okay just like I covered in the last video, we're going to make sure that the start position is going to be in the center of the screen. So when we hit start, our form is generated in the middle of the screen, which just makes it a little bit nice. I'm a big fan of that. So right now it's empty. Let's take a look. Um, first things first, let's update the icon for our application. And like I said, I've just rent, I've downloaded a random PNG file from the Internet. And usually I'll just go ahead and say PNG to ICO or ICO, whichever you, I, I, you know, I usually just say ICO, but I'll use the first website here, cloudconvert.com, and then I'll go ahead and select the file. And then we know we want to convert it to an ICO, so convert. And there it is, we can download it. Oops. So we'll hit download and I'm going to do my desktop save. And now in our form on the right hand side, we're going to look for the icon property. And here we see it's 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 a big image, so whenever it gets converted into an ICO format, it, it'll definitely be blurry, but uh, it's a good example on how to update icons. So we'll go ahead and uh, select that. As you can see, now we have a new logo. Very cool. All right. So let's go ahead and import a button like we did in our last video. We'll place it at the bottom. We'll change the name. Generate button will be the name. Whoops. And then for the text, we're going to say generate lotto numbers. And if I didn't cover in the last video, just remember you can actually change the font. So feel free to change the font. There's different uh, fonts here. And I'm just going to choose a random one here. Um, what's a cool one? Let's do something like this. And you also have options in regards to not only the font, um, if I remember correctly, there was an op there was a actual style for the actual button. So you see this flat style; it's standard. You can actually you can actually change it to pop up. It looks a little flatter. Um, you know, gives you a different feel for the actual button. So if you're looking to do something like that, make sure to take a look at your options in regards to the appearance of the button. Do that's flat. There's I, I almost want to say that the that the pop-up, it's been a while since I've actually used this. That the pop-up one looked a little 3D, but I think I'm I guess I'm wrong. Let's just do flat for now. Okay. We're gonna double click on the button and that'll generate our click event. This is our load event, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And what we'll do is um whoops we got an error so let's take a look um so this is a good thing to note whenever you have an actual event generated by double clicking on the form in this case it was our load event i double clicked on the actual form twice and that generates the load event okay if you actually delete the 
event in the code in the CS file, um, that'll actually throw a wrench in your in your uh, program. So it'll say, hey, there's 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 something missing. There's references missing to that specific event. So let's click on this here. We can see here that we have an overloaded function here, um, and I'll explain that in another video. But it's pretty much referencing the event. We can see here that that uh, the lottery numbers generated form load event is being referenced since since we deleted it and no longer exists. So you can just go ahead and delete it from um, this section here. Hit save, and you'll be back to normal. Okay. We'll still click on that. Same thing for this. If I were to delete it, go back to my form, we'd have we would have an issue. So if you see this error, that's what it means. Okay, so there it is. And what we'll do is we'll generate six numbers instead of just one. Um, so let's get to it. Um, one way that we can do that is um, we can uh, let's see. Yeah, we can store them in an array. Um, so we'll do um, integer lotto numbers. And we want six of them, so it's going to be six elements. And just remember, arrays start from zero, and arrays start with an index of zero. So we're going to go from zero to five, and we're going to actually use a for loop. So in this case, it'll be four, and we'll say integer x equals zero, and then the condition is going to be while x is less than six, we're going to add one. So the plus plus is the same as taking a number and adding one to it. So whenever you see the reference of plus plus, it's incrementing the value by one. Okay. So if X was, if X was actually zero and we meet the condition of X being less than six on the next iteration, we're going to go ahead and just the plus plus will add one and increment the X by one. So then the next time around, it's going to be one. The next time around it's going to be two, three, and that's what it's actually happening in the for loop. So we have a start position here of an integer. We define the actual value of zero. We have a condition for the code or the body of the code to run. So this will be it. So if the condition is met, any code in between uh, these curly braces will be executed. And after that's done, then this incrementation will occur okay so in this case what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a random number generator okay and what we'll do is we'll do the exact same thing we did in the last video but in this case we're going to be referencing the array so lotto number and we're going to specify the index of where we're going to store this value. So remember, um, the index starts at zero, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and reference the variable x, because that'll keep the count. It'll be x equals generator dot next. And we'll do from one, I believe you can go up to 63. You can double check. Depends what lot or uh, lottery you're uh, actually uh, playing. But we'll leave it at that. Okay. Let's do console dot log. Actually, it's right line, and we'll do lotto numbers x. I'm curious to see what the actual number is. For each one that gets generated, let's take a look. Let's run our program and click on generate lotto number. Actually, I don't even think I have the window. It's been a while. So we'll 
project window. Actually, I have it on the right side. <laughs> Apologize about that. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the output window, which was right there underneath my nose. And we can see that the numbers are being generated. Um, doesn't look like six, actually. It looks like quite a bit more. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve numbers. Huh. Okay. Must have clicked it twice. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Let's go ahead and close it. Let's give it another shot. And it should only generate six. And there we go. We have six numbers. So we see that the numbers have been generated. And these are being stored in the array. Okay. Instead of storing them in an array, let's go ahead and create a label. Okay, so we'll do the label. The name of the label will be number one label. And I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the actual font. So then it'll be a lot bigger. Let's go with a 20. Okay. And then I'm going to copy it and then I'm just going to paste. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to paste again. Three, four, five, and six. I'm going to go ahead and click on them and change the name of the labels. So it'll be, um, what's the name of the first one? Whoops. So it's num label. It's kind of a lame name. Lotto number one label. And then we'll change it to lotto number two for the other one. There we go. We'll do number three. Four, five, and six. All right. And how do we update that? Let's go ahead and make sure that when the actual, when the program loads, we are, we definitely don't want it to have the text reading label 1111. So let's go ahead and change that. And an easy way to do that is double clicking on the load. Actually, I'm going to delete that. Let's see if we caused an error. Yep. <laughs> Gets a bit annoying. We can actually go ahead and change that just like we did on the position. And what we'll do is we can create another array, but instead of an integer array, it's going to go ahead and be a label array. Okay, so the actual form control is going to be the data type for this uh, for this array. So we'll we'll see we'll say it's called uh, let's say it's called label array equals new label. And we'll say it's six. Okay. And what we want to do is we actually want to reference um, who these, uh, you know, what the actual elements are of the array. So in this case, we'll just do equals oops, So one thing I want to point out is if you actually know what the elements are going to be for the array, normally we would assign the actual size of the array like you saw on there. So here on the integers, we have a six. Um, so we we're going to, we're going to go ahead and actually declare that's going to be six elements for the size of the array. But if you actually know the elements, you can go ahead and actually use the curly braces and actually go ahead and insert the um, elements that are going to be in the array um, as you declare the array. So here I'm going to go ahead and name the